I'm going to sort of highlight three particular ways that I think uh, games can uh, do that. Uh, the first one uh, being with regards to behavior change. Uh, so there have been a number of games made uh, around this sort of uh, this sort of topic, this question, this uh, this this is a goal. Um, so I'm just listing off a few here. Uh, risk perceptions, for instance, uh, for like sexually transmitted diseases, smoking, alcohol. Uh, people not, might not really be aware of um, of the risk that they're actually at when they engage in certain activities. Um, and video games can help. Uh, you, can, you can certainly make a product that um, highlights those risks, uh, makes them, uh, really shows them to you in a way that uh, brings a, it's, a, it's kind of going back to that new perspective thing, uh, but it's using that potential new perspective uh, to result in a behavior change. Um, there was one game, for instance, that comes to mind, it's a little bit old now, uh, but it's with regards to sexually transmitted diseases, and it's like an AIDS roulette game where it shows the odds of uh, contracting sexually transmitted diseases, um, the more people that you end up uh, having sex with. Uh, it shows how your, your risks actually go up. And so by directly interacting with this product, um, you can see sort of statistically um, your chances of contracting diseases. Um, same thing with smoking and such. Uh, it's kind of hard to really appreciate your risk when maybe you grow up in a situation where everyone you know smokes. And it's, it can be very difficult to sort of understand the link between that and, uh, and the health challenges that that might bring. Um, but a video game can really be made to, to highlight this to you. Uh, games can be used to, um, to work on self-concepts, uh, such as uh, stigmas, and self-efficacy, you can, there's been a number of games made uh, that by playing these products, uh, the person is, the, the product helps people to understand that they have control over their situation. Um, the last presentation was an awesome example of that, uh, showing that you actually can take control over your, your person, over whatever challenges you have to have. Uh, I'm going to give an example of that in a, in a few minutes. Um, a game can be made around perceived norms. Uh, for instance, uh, I gave here an example of campus drinking. So when people first go to college or university, there may be a perception that, oh, everybody's drinking. Uh, everybody's drinking a lot. There's a lot of binge drinking going on. That's the normal thing. I'm just going to sort of join in that. And, you know, regardless of uh, how much I may drink before going to college or university, uh, I kind of want to fit in and I'm going to participate in these activities. And if your perception of what the norm is, is wrong, or maybe off by a little bit, um, you may engage in behaviors that are more detrimental to you than, um, than is necessary, uh, simply because you didn't really understand um, what the norm was that you were sort of trying to mimic. Another area is uh, within medication adherence. Um, one of the biggest costs I'm understanding in the healthcare system is on prescriptions. And one of the biggest problems with that is prescriptions not being used correctly. Um, they tend to not have the effect that is desired if they are not used correctly. And frequently people just um, do not follow the instructions that, they're, that they need to. If a video game can be developed to improve adherence to medication, um, that can just bring value to the healthcare system simply in terms of dollars, uh, in terms of how much medication is wasted, uh, and certainly to the, to the people themselves as they will hopefully uh, have better health outcomes if they prescribe, if they follow their prescriptions uh, properly. So one of the problems is uh, we actually often know what we need to do um, to get healthy and to stay healthy, uh, but quite frequently people just sort of don't act on those, uh, that knowledge. Um, for myself, I, I think I do pretty well in a number of areas. I don't smoke, I don't drink really very much anymore anyways. Uh, but you know, for myself, I know healthy eating, um, not so good at. Uh, there's been lots of times where I, I, uh, I may not be the best uh, in that regard. And I'm actually not doing very well at improving that. Um, and, and I know it. So, um, you know, we're often aware that what we need to do to get better, and sometimes we actually simply just don't do it until problems arise, perhaps. 
So in the video game context, uh, what can video games bring to the table um, that may help uh, somebody uh, with regards to these challenges? So you can make games and game type products that can help with identification, uh, making your, putting yourself in the role of a character uh, that has similar challenges to you. And research has shown that the, the better that the player um, identifies with the character who is going through and facing certain challenges, uh, the more they have the sense of what's happening to them can happen to me. Um, so certainly if you were to make a game based around the, the sexually transmitted disease example, uh, if the characters and if the situations don't really resonate with you as, in terms of your personal experience, um, it's likely that you won't take the outcomes presented in that game very seriously. But video games can be very good at um, providing scenarios and situations that you can identify with and sort of put yourself in the role of these situations. And if so, uh, you will probably appreciate um, the connection between the outcomes of the game and potential for them to sort of happen to you. And they can be a trigger for um, for motivating the person towards behavior change. Um, another area is using a mechanic of a nurturing sort of environment. We all know what games are kind of like um, um, the, the sort of pet, you take care of the virtual pet kind of games. Uh, there's a lot of games where you can be put in a scenario where you are caring for somebody else. And in those situations, um, you can tend to start to appreciate the need for that character to um, take better care of themselves in a way that you might not if it was just simply for yourself. Uh, so um, we're, for instance, at our studio right now, uh, we're, in, we're doing a proposal uh, to get some funding to develop a virtual pet game for, for um, children with arthritis. I'm starting to get some of that myself. And uh, it's sort of, I found out that a lot of children actually have this, and that's sort of heartbreaking. Um, and the fact is, there's a lot of things that these children can do to actually uh, reduce those symptoms and uh, lead, help them to lead very, very normal lives. And so the proposal is to create, in our case, with uh, St. Kitts Hospital in Toronto, um, a video game where they take care of a pet who has the same condition that they do. And who, um, if they have to take care of that pet, and they have to give them warm baths every morning and follow their medication. And the idea is that if a child sort of takes care of a pet and learns that they have to do these activities, that uh, hopefully that information will translate to them appreciating the, the need for that in their own lives. And it'll help them. So the, the sort of nurturing can be used directly to sort of help people. Uh, certainly games can be uh, used to re uh, rehearse real life scenarios. A scenario that might be too dangerous to sort of um, undertake in real life or um, just sort of play, playing through scenarios that allow you to understand risks uh, in a way that you couldn't normally do. And games as a mechanic can certainly be used to monitor and incentivize uh, positive behaviors. So you certainly want to create games that um, don't just give you badges, like I, I took my medication so I get a badge today. Um, that's not necessarily going to be the most effective use of games. But if we can monitor your actual behavior um, and provide some incentive that's directly linked to the challenge that they face and their positive um, actions, um, then they can be affected as well. So I'm just going to give uh, an example from our studio, a project that we're working on, and this relates to asthma medication adherence for kids. So we're making an app. Uh, the, the app has a parent side and a child side. So what it does is, I'm gonna, uh, let's pretend this is an inhaler. Um, I don't actually know what it is, but it looks like one. Uh, it's a laser pointer. The laser pointer. Okay. Well, today a laser pointer is a No inhalation. I'm going to, I'm going to inhale it. Uh, the laser. And so basically, the game is set up such that when I take my medication, uh, the, the mobile device detects that. It sends a signal to the parent's app. So the middle screen there, it just shows a timeline of uh, this child, in this case, Jessica. Uh, and it shows that, you know, what she, when she's supposed to take her medication, it records if she has taken it, and it rec records a whole lot of um, information, whatever it is that's necessary. But it's, 
important in this case that it directly ties into the actual laser pointer. Oh, no, I guess it's the uh, And it also uh, really lets the parent, gives them a window into something that they simply wouldn't know otherwise. They wouldn't know if their child took their uh, emergency inhaler when they were at school, for instance. Uh, but through this app, they actually can. And then on the, on the right side, it shows that uh, we can collect this data and sort of present it to you as a way of um, um, giving you incentive to make your calendar not have a bunch of negative uh, results on it. So we can track there the days that you've uh, taken your rescue inhaler, uh, perhaps because you didn't take your medication inhaler when you were supposed to. Uh, and basically, we can show exactly the activities with regards to adherence that the child has uh, engaged in. So this is sort of on the parent side. Uh, it's basically providing a window into, um, into the child's um, adherence. But it's also um, uh, being used, in this case, to provide incentives for the child to actually follow through on the medication. So on the child side, what we've got is a game. And in this case, it's, it's called God of Air. And uh, the story is that the gods of Olympus have had a problem. Uh, Aether, the god of air, has actually stumbled and had a wind knocked out of it. And it's flown down to Earth. It's, it's flown down Mount Olympus. And the creatures of Earth that have uh, breathed this air are being transformed by this magical upper air of the gods. And so in this case, this farmer is relatively distraught as his puppy turns into a Hermes uh, magical puppy and flies off through the air. So uh, the story here is Olympus has lost its air. Uh, the gods are in trouble. Uh, and actually, the creatures themselves are not going to be able to, to uh, control this power, and they are going to be destroyed, ultimately, if someone doesn't save them, reclaim the energy of the gods, and, and give it back to Olympus. And so you are the hero. So in this case, uh, you're, you're the hero, and your god, your goal is to save Olympus. And to do that, you've got to capture all these creatures that have breathed the air of the gods. Now, the way you do it in the game, the only way you can play the game is by, get, is by, um, is by taking your medication. When you um, take your inhaler, you get energy to play in the game. Uh, and the only way that you're going to be able to combat these creatures and collect them, in sort of a Pokemon style, if you're familiar with that game, it's like a collect them all sort of Pokemon mechanic. Uh, the only way you're going to be able to engage in these things is by uh, taking, literally, your medication. You, you can't play the game. So on the bottom here, These things here uh, show your energy. So if you take your inhaler, these little dots fill up, and you can go on a quest by pressing this button. Um, it highlights different sort of aspects of, this, of the game and stuff. Uh, but that, basically, that's the core of it. And you go on a number of adventures. Uh, your parents can actually send you gifts. So you're, the, each day, your parents is able to send sort of free gifts to help you on this quest. And you're ultimately going all across uh, you know, ancient Greece here, capturing creatures. In this case, it's a beetle that's been transformed uh, into a magical uh, point. Um, we have a timeline. So this is sort of similar to the parents' timeline. But this includes video game related things. So you caught this minx crow or whatever. Uh, but on the right side of the screen, it shows when you took your medication. Uh, the game, if you don't take your medication on time, uh, it's, or, no, sorry, if you take your like, rescue inhaler, we'll want to know why. Uh, and it gives us an opportunity to ask the child questions. So you get a bonus energy in the game if after taking your um, rescue inhaler, you give us some information about that. And it'll sort of say here, yeah, you, you've answered one of the questions around uh, your use. So here's an example of, you know, we've noticed that you took your medication inhaler. Can you help us understand perhaps what might have been the trigger for that? And the player can say whether it was uh, the weather or whatever it was that they felt um, helped to trigger that particular problem. The important thing here, though, is that the game is used. Uh, it's a fun game. It's thematically based around um, breathing, certainly. Um, but ultimately, <coughs> you got to take your medication to be able to play this game and to try to recover this, the lost pair of gods. And uh, it only works that way. And it's, hopefully, we can make the game really fun and use the game as a motivational vehicle to assist kids who might forget. Because if you really like the game and you're playing this game every day, it's very unlikely that you're going to forget to do the thing that's going to get you the energy in the game. 
And of course, you know, once you get into the habit pattern of use of taking your medication as prescribed, you're likely to uh, go through that. 